Last year, I had this conversation with my business partner, and we we're having a conversation about whether or not we should join this co-branding mentors mentorship. This is what we were discussing. We, we both had around one to two thousand dollars. We had two thousand dollars in our bank accounts each, and the mentorship was fifteen thousand dollars just to join, and then we had to pay more money just to keep being there. So it was a last money, and we were really scared to make the jump. I'm not gonna lie to you. I remember telling him, "Should I join? I'm gonna be in a very tough spot. Should I do this? Should I do not do this?" And I was really scared. I was really scared. I was like, "Okay, if this fails, then how am I gonna pay for my bills?" This is what I was thinking. And so I made a decision that changed my life. Okay, but first I realized a few things. I was saying, I was saying stuff like, "Okay, I want to join this mentorship, but..." Let me, let me get some clients first, let me make some money first, and then I'm going to join so that I'm more comfortable. This is what I was thinking. Okay, but then I realized, why would I do this? Like, why would I join after I land clients? What, what's the point of this? Isn't the point to join so that I can land clients? That didn't make sense to me. And so, when I, when I saw this thing in my mind... When I saw that what I was actually thinking and I saw below the surface, I was like, okay, this is fear. And if I fight my fear, then probably I'm gonna fight, I'm gonna land clients. Okay? And another thing I, I thought was the reason I should join now is because money's tight. If it wasn't tight, then why would I join? Why would I join then? Why would I if money isn't tight, why do I need to make money? This is what I was thinking. And so I realized how stupid that was. And long story short, I joined this mentorship and I want to share some of the biggest lessons I learned from my nine-figure mentor. This is a mentor that was worked with Dan Locke with a lot of clients. And just for some proof, last month I made around $13,000. As you can see here, it's just 11K, 10.8K euros. That's around $12,000. And I have some more in my PayPal and Revolut. So, yeah. So, one of the, the most important thing I learned is reading books isn't productive. I remember being this type of guy who, who, was, who was reading one to two books a week. I was like, oh, the more, the more information I gather, the better I'm, the better I'm going to write copy and all this bullshit. And I realized none of that matter Because it's not about taking more information. It's about applying what you already know. And two... The things you learn from books it doesn't really it doesn't really apply to copywriting. Most of it, most of it doesn't. It's it's more generic information, generic information. So if you want to learn about psychology, if you want to learn a few things about people, then go on. Or for sure, I still do it. I still read a few books here and there. And the the best thing I do is I don't read a lot of books anymore. I I read a few books over and over again. I take notes on them and I read them again. So yeah, it's not necessary for you to, to read books. And another thing, here's the thing my mentor told me in, my, in our first call together. He told me, I told him I'm reading books and stuff, and he was like, do, do you feel productive when you read these books? I, I don't remember exactly what he said, but this is the essence of it. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I feel productive because I learn new things. And he was like, why not just read books just because you like reading them? Instead of just trying to be productive 24-7. And yeah, that's that's when my my belief cracked. That's be, that belief I had cracked. And that new belief got inside of me. And then I started making money. Then I started making money. That, so, so I recommend don't not reading books all the time. So the second thing I learned is you don't need to be the best copywriter to reach 10k a month. You just need to be, to be better than most. It's like a pyramid. It's like a pyramid. At the bottom... It's very saturated. You feel like there's a lot of competition. You feel like there are a lot of people trying to steal your clients. When in reality, the more you climb, the more you realize there's not really that much competition, if at all. If you're the best, you have no problem finding clients. I'm telling you that. So the only w the only time where you're going to struggle to land clients, it's really the beginning. It's like most things. It's like most things. Let's say you start anything. In the beginning, you're going to suck. In the beginning, you're going to suck. If you're fighting, when you got into into the fight gym, I bet you were getting beat up by everybody. You're getting beat up by everybody. But the more you showed up, the more you kept going, the more you started beating people. 
that's that's what's happening. I remember I remember getting beat up by everybody in, in my first few months, and then in the first year I was beating up people who were who were training for five years, and I was like, whoa, whoa, <laughs> and it's because I was consistent, and because I became good. Most people aren't, aren't serious, so this is where you're gonna stand out. This is where you're gonna stand out. So you don't need to be the best; you just need to be better than most. That's it. The, the third thing I learned is you need to become a, a full stack copywriter. You, you, you can't just be an email marketer. You, you can't just be an email copywriter. You, you just write the copy and you send them you send them some Google Docs. No, that's not how it works. That's not how it works. For me to reach 10k a month, I'm not only really writing emails for clients. I'm writing social media copy. I'm writing um, funnel copy. I'm writing sales pages, landing pages. I'm writing VSLs. I'm writing. I'm writing. I'm writing everything. And I also have people. I hire people to to build the funnels for me because I suck at it, and I also don't want to spend my time in this. I rather spend time into more high leverage activities. I'm not really trying to learn how to do funnel designing and all this bullshit. I don't really care. I'd rather just pay somebody a few hundred bucks. They do the job. I get paid thousands of dollars, and I just do what I love. That's it. Now, if you're a beginner, you might not have this luxury of hire, being able to hire somebody else. So you might want to learn some things and yeah, go from there. I also do. Funneled automations, integrations. I do uh, the tech stuff, the deliverability, DMARC, all this, all this crap. I do all of this for clients, and that's why you need to become a one-stop shop as a copywriter. You, this is the best thing you can do. This is by far the, the best thing you can do. You, you need to be able to do anything. Okay, you you, just, you can't just be a copywriter, an email copywriter. So yeah, the fourth thing we learned, I learned is keeping clients in the loop and I remember when I was working with new clients I never updated them on anything so I remember I did this with one of my first eight-figure clients who paid me six thousand dollars for the project it was it was a few email sequences it was two email sequences I think and it was one funnel six thousand dollars for the funnel and two email sequences and we got on a call we closed no th that project we didn't get on a call we closed him from the DMs and then I got on a call with his COO, which is chief operating officer. And we discussed a little bit about the project, the expectations, this and this. And I was like, okay, let's do this. I told him what I needed from him and we started. So I started writing the copy. I wrote, the, I wrote sales pages, I wrote landing pages, I wrote emails and I hadn't updated them on a thing. I hadn't updated them on a thing. And it was by, it's by far the worst thing you can do because you don't want to leave your, your clients guessing what you're doing. You don't want to do this. This is a big red flag. This is a big red flag. So now what I do is I give them a lot of updates on what I do. For I might do this even even if, if the client if the client is new, I'm going to give them updates every single day. So let's say I started on a project. Okay, I'm gonna send them a message at the end of the day and be like, hey, so hey name so. I just finished with the research today. Tomorrow I'm gonna start writing, and this is how I go forward. And then the next day I'm gonna be like, okay, so today I wrote three emails, and this and this, and tomorrow I'm gonna do the same. And I, you want to keep them on the loop because you're giving them these little wins. You're giving them these little mental wins that, okay, I didn't. I, I make you're reinforcing the decision they made. You, you're not making them feel. You're increasing their buy-in. That's how it's called. And because people, after they buy something, they have some little regret. So you want to battle that immediately. And you do that by giving them these mental wins all the time. And that's how they get into you. That's how they refer you into other people. And that's how they want to work more with you and they like you more. So yeah, people work with people they know, like, and trust. So the fifth thing is be unique in anything you do. It doesn't matter if it's your personal brand. It doesn't matter if it's in the way you write copy. It doesn't matter. You need to be unique. If you're not unique, if you look like everybody else, that's called guilt by association. If you look like everybody else, you'll be treated like everybody else. And how do most people get treated? And do most people have clients? Do most corporates have clients? Absolutely not. So if you don't want to look like everybody, if you don't want to get the same results everybody else does and every, the same results everybody else has, you need to be different. It's as simple as that. You need to be unique. You need to be unique. And you can't just copy and paste something from somebody else. This is where you use your brain. This is where you use your brain. I know it's hard. I know it's hard. I know using your brain is hard. But this is what you need to do. So the sixth thing, the sixth thing I learned is it's not about the client. 
the deal needs to benefit you and the client. You're not a slave, you're business partners. Yeah, so that's a big thing I learned is I was trying to please the client way too much. I was doing all this work. I was undercharging. I was doing this. I was doing a lot of crap. And I ended up not even liking the deal. I, so I got off the call and I was like, oof, it finally ended. And then I, I had this, I felt like I had this dumbbell, this weight on me that I just couldn't take off and I, I just need to, to finish the project. And I was like, oh my God, how do, how do I do all of this? Why did I even agree on this project? And so I ended up hitting myself and I was kicking myself, metaphorically, of course, that I made a terrible decision. And I did make a terrible decision. And that's why I want you to not make the same mistake I did. I don't want you to, to over undercharge and be overworked. I don't want you to do this because it's a big mistake. So I'd say, because a lot of corporates tell, ask me, how much should I charge? How much should I charge? What I always tell them is charge what you would like to get paid. And of course, if you're a beginner, you can't just charge $10,000 for something, of course. But just go in the middle. Don't go too low. Don't go too high. Just go with something that you would like to get paid for. That's what I would tell you. So the eighth thing is, actually the seventh thing is, if something went to shit, move on. Get over it fast. You can't stay there. And so what I mean by that is a lot of copywriters will send outreach. They'll get ghosted. They will land a client, they will do a project with them, it won't work well, and they will start blaming themselves. They have these feelings of anxiety, they feel stress, they feel this bullshit, they feel like they want to give up just because it didn't work. And so what I'm going to tell you right now is don't get discouraged. Don't get discouraged. These are just, the way I view these things, these step backs, are actually just roadblocks. Are just roadblocks in the way. Just like if you were to run, you would have some, you know, if you were to do some marathon run, you would have some roadblocks along the way. That's how I view it. That's how I view it. It's like, it's like when you're going to the gym, it's like if you're a fighter, of course, you're going to get injured. Of course, all of these thing, things are going to happen. It's the same thing. It's just a few steps. You, sometimes you need to take one step back to take two steps forward, two, three steps forward. That's how I see it. Every time I get a step, a step back, I, I don't view this. I don't view this as a setback. Never. I view this as this is where I'm making progress. Progress isn't linear. You don't go like this. It it goes like this. Okay, that's how it goes. So don't get discouraged if anything happens. So the eighth thing is, be a human. Build relationship with your clients as well. A lot of mistakes. A mistake a lot of people make is. They're going to land a client and they're just going to talk about work. And while that's fine, while that's fine, it, it will get you paid. It won't secure you a long-term deal. You need to have good relationship with your clients. You need to talk about fun stuff. Okay, of course, not talk bullshit. I'm not saying talk bullshit. But I don't want to be this boring copywriter who, who just do the, does the work and that's it. You're never going to get referred to other people, probably. So that's why you need to have relationship with your clients okay now the ninth thing is having walk away power act like you don't care about the deal and that's also something you do with girls that's also something you do with literally anything in life you don't want to the person who needs the deal most is the person who's gonna compromise what they want usually so if you need the deal if you actually need the deal i'm, I'm saying need it need it you might even do slave work. I'm not talking about talking about this literally, of course. I'm talking about this metaphorically. So somebody might say, oh, I can't do $2,000 for this project. Let's do it for $200. And if you really need the deal, if you have this scarcity mindset, if you, if you don't have abundance, if you don't have walkaway power, you're going to say yes to this deal. And I've done this. That's how I know it. I've done this. My business partner have done this. And I love corporates. I know have done this it's a big mistake it's a big mistake you don't want you want to act like you don't need the deal even if you do need the deal that's how i want you to see this even if you, even if you need the deal i want you to act like you don't need the deal because this will help you this will help you okay so have walk away power and the third thing tenth thing is taking action over everything i know i know this sounds simple i know this sounds really simple 
but this is literally the secret formula that I use to become a 10k month copywriter. It's literally the secret formula. I'm not even kidding. It's taking action over everything. You don't need the perfect system. You don't need the perfect outreach method. You don't need to be the best copywriter. You just need to take action. The more action you take, the more and the faster you're going to reach your goals. That's how it works. It's not about having the best the best outreach method or this and this. It's, it's not about that. Just taking action. That's really it. You can have the worst outreach method, you can have the worst things, you can be the worst copywriter, you can ha have, have the worst situations you can possibly think. But if you're constantly taking action, you will reach 2 to 5 to 10k a month. Easy. Easy. It's about taking action on the right things. And if you know what to take, to take action on, then it's literally possible. It's literally impossible not to land clients. It's literally impossible. I haven't seen a person implement this system, taking action over everything and not land clients. I haven't seen anybody. The, 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 the same thing happens with my mentorship students. Some people may join and they will land four-figure clients in the first week. I'm not even kidding to you. They will land four-figure four figure retainers the first few days of joining. I, I'm, not, I'm not kidding to you. And there are others who've been in the mentorship for like one month, two months, and they haven't landed a single client. And it's because... It's not because of the system. The system clearly works because people have landed clients in the first week. It's because they're not taking action. They don't want this badly enough. They don't want this badly enough. If you don't take action, you can have the best, the, the best outage method. It will not work. It will not work if you're not taking action. Okay? And that's what I want to leave you with. So these were the nine, the 10 lessons I learned from my nine-figure mentor. And if you found this valuable, make sure to like, subscribe, share, and I'll see you in the next one. Love you.